Hi, Jay and Laura here, and this is Jay and Laura TV here for your life, your marriage, and your family. We're going to jump right into marriage in the news. We got some fun stuff Woo, this week You better week believe it. From about. Forbes magazine, Tim Maurer writes, ways budgeting saved his marriage. I don't believe it. Well, yes. Okay. In our marriage, budgeting was huge because early on, we found out that Jay was a saver and Laura was a... Spender. I don't like that word, budget. spender. She <laughs> would word, spend and word. spend. In fact, at one point, she had us in such credit card debt that we had to take drastic measures. But now, we budget. It is so freeing. It's so fun because it really gives you the, the chance to work together. We're going to talk about the benefits. But here's what Maurer says. Over 50% of marriages end in divorce. Of those... 50% of those splits are because of financial disputes. So the primary reason people are getting divorced is because of financial disputes. And he goes on to say that 100% of marriages deal with money issues. Because we all have money, whether it's a lot or a little, and we're all going to deal with the way that we have to spend it. And you know, seriously though, I did not like that word budget when we got married. I did not like it at all. She liked the word credit card. I did like that word and spend that money. Don't budget that money. But you know what? Here are some things that Tim wrote in his article that really resonated with me in ways that budgeting has saved our marriage. And one of those ways is that it forces us to collaborate. It forces us, it forced us to work together and say, you know what? Here's what's realistic we can spend on the kids. Here's what's realistic we can spend on kids. Shoes. Here's what realistic we can spend on Laura's wardrobe. All those kinds of things that forced us to collaborate. Another way it helped us is that it offered healthy accountability. You know what? Whenever I would leave to go to the grocery store, Jay'd go, do you have your list? Yes, I have my list because if it wasn't on the list, I didn't buy it. It offered healthy accountability. Another way is that it humbles us. Ooh, Budgeting humbles us. Time. And you know why? Because, and I can tell you, this is very humbling. When you have to come to your spouse and go, guess what? I screwed up for the umpteenth billionth time and put too much on the credit card. Ask for forgiveness. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But that humbling, it really does humble. And then another way, and this is the fun way, is that it does offer ways to celebrate. Because when you do have those small victories, when you, when you work so hard, and for me, when I worked really hard at budgeting and keeping us on that budget, and I saw the bank account slowly growing, and we weren't in the red anymore, we were in the black, I was like, that is a celebration. It was a cause to celebrate. So you know what? Bud Budgeting can save your marriage. So if you have trouble with your budget and you need to get on the same page, there's lots of great helps out there. One of our favorites is Dave Ramsey. Look, just Google his name and he can give you a lot of advice on your finances. Well, let's move to the marriage question of the week offered by you to one. us. And it's really quite interesting because I wanted to use this question last week. And when I proposed it, Laura said, no, 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 we can't do that. Well, then last night in our small group Bible study, we were studying Colossians, and guess what? This question came up. So I said, we've got to do it this week, honey, because now you have the answer from the Bible. Here we go. This week's question from our listeners is, Laura, do you submit to Jay? First of all, why did you single me out? Why did you have to single me out? But anyway, no, seriously, we did talk about this in our small group last night, and the answer is yes. Because you know what? Last night when we were reading it in Colossians, I kind of hit on that word submit. I wanted to see what it meant, and here was the definition. It said accept and yield to authority. And here's the deal, ladies. You know what? We have to submit. It says in Colossians to submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. And if you call yourself a Christian, you're already submitting to the Lord. At least I hope you are if you're calling yourself a Christian. You're submitting to the Lord. He is our authority. And all it's saying is Colossians is, you know what? God has ordained our husbands as the head of the household, and we have to accept and yield to that authority just like we do to the Lord. Not that they're Jesus, not that they're saviors, but you know what? This is what God's told us to do. And yeah, it's hard and it ain't easy sometimes, but you know what? We have to do it. And while we're the head, realize this, ladies, you're the neck. You what, you're what? you what turns the head. There's no question in my mind that that's the way it is. I was turning, not that's disagreeing. Right. <laughs> I was turning, not disagreeing. Moving right along to Connection Corner, where we're going to help you connect with your spouse, your kids, your parents, whoever you need to connect with in your world. We want to give you some tips to help you do that. And one of the things that we love to do is we love to do, I like to do research. Jay doesn't like to do research so much. I do. I love to read people's websites and blogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like to research. Don't I even try? I like to research golf and yeah, baseball exactly. and football. So, but one of the websites I stumbled upon this week called Marriage missions asked this question, can you rebuild trust in your marriage? 
and as I thought about it, I thought, well, absolutely you can rebuild trust in your marriage. You know, it just involves forgiveness. You know, my mind of having this conversation. And then I started reading what they were writing. And they said this, this is a tough, tough subject because there is such a misunderstanding of what trust entails. Many people think it is tied in with forgiving someone. But in reality, forgiving someone and trusting them are two different acts right. of faith. You can forgive a person without trusting mm. that person, but you cannot trust a person without forgiving them first. It's important to realize that trusting a person is not a prerequisite to forgiving them. Trusting God is. You are trusting God when you forgive. Please don't mix and intertwine the two. And you know what? As I thought about it, I thought how true that is because we can forgive someone, but when we forgive our spouse for overspending or maybe saying an unkind word or doing something even bigger than that, we have to forgive them. We're told we have to forgive, but we don't necessarily rebuild that trust right then. What we are doing is trusting God mm. to change them and keep them from having that action happen again. When Jay had to forgive me for spending too much, he forgave me, but he had to trust that I was going to learn and not go out and do that again. Very good. Well, Real Life with Jay and Laura. We were in Sparta, Wisconsin this weekend. We met a lot of fun people. Cheeseheads. And, and I actually brought a little someone home with me. If you can tell, I got a little frog in the throat here. But the fun thing that happened in Sparta was this. We did a workshop on Friday night and Saturday, and the pastor had asked if we would stay over Sunday so that I could preach at the two services. We were like, you bet. We love ministry. We love ministering to all kinds of people. So Sunday was a no-brainer. Well, the first service started at 8 o'clock in the morning. And in my brain, I'm like, well, okay, I need to be at the church at 7.30. I'll get up at 6.30 so I have plenty of time to get ready and to eat some breakfast and be prepared. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, as I rolled over on Sunday morning and peered through bleary eyes at the digital clock next to our hotel bed, I thought it said 6.30. But you know the interesting thing about a digital clock? A 6 and a 5, there's only one little bar missing to see the difference between a 5 and a 6 on a digital clock. It was actually 5.30, but in my brain, I'm like, 6.30, time to go, let's go. I'm up, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm getting ready. I go down to the little, you know, hotel breakfast area, get a little muffin or something, I can't remember, and I pop out to the car at what I think is 7.20. I turn on the ignition to the car, and the clock on the car says 6.20. I'm like, that can't be right. This car must be off. So I whipped out my iPhone and thought, what? Oh, no, it's 6.20. I am an hour early up for this thing. <laughs> what am I going to do? I can't go back to the hotel room because if I wake sleeping, beauty, she ain't going to be so beautiful. So drove to McDonald's, got a cup of coffee, and prepared even more for my sermon. Had a whole extra hour to prepare. <laughs> Actually, what I did was I listened to the farmers talk about, you know, the cash and the crops and the crops and the cash and all that stuff that those farmers talk about. But anyway... That is real life with us. It happens. We are just a couple of goofballs, and we get to share those fun stories with you. Well, this is Jay, Laura, and Jay's Frog saying we really appreciate you. We're here for your life, your marriage, and your family. Have a great day. Hey, are you watching this on Facebook? Then you know what? Press that little button right down there at the bottom that says share and post it on your own Facebook wall. Share it with your friends and spread the word.